Her name is Jessica Farrell. Farrell. I'm sorry. She's a senior in her fifth year, working two jobs uh, as a landscaper and artist model. She's been in New Mexico for many years, but is a native of California, and we're excited to have her talk. Welcome, Jessica. Is this loud enough? Can everyone hear me? Okay. Great. Hi. Good morning. Welcome again to our UNM teach-in about Occupy Wall Street in Albuquerque. Again, my name's Jessica. I'm a student and I've been in the Occupy movement actively about a month. I'm here to talk to you today about an example of one of the many actions Occupy is involved in, but something that is particularly pertinent to us as New Mexicans. And that is saving New Mexico chili from GMO contamination. I don't think any of us could deny that green chili is not only an important part of our food, but an important part of our culture. Our official state question is red or green. We're home to the UNM chili capital of the world. It's been integrated into the three main food groups, breakfast, burritos, and beer. I myself worked at the frontier for two years as a cashier and then as a line cook. I dished out what must have been literally 10 billion tons, and that's only a slight exaggeration of green chili in my time there. I can still remember what I had to say every day to the hundreds of people, the endless line coming in through those doors of students, teachers, bankers, businessmen, firemen, and of course the many drunk people coming in Friday and Saturday night who are possibly my favorite customers. Ordering lots of, lots of enchiladas, red or green, chopped or stewed, these are questions that we ask every day. What you may not realize is that our official state question is in danger of becoming what is red or green to becoming red, green, or GMO. As I stand here speaking, our state has already passed legislature funding NMSU to research, develop, produce, and package a GMO green chili seed. The organization in charge of this development is the New Mexico Chili Association, which is a misleading name to say the least. So to make sure we're on the same page, I want to talk a little bit about what GMO is, what it means, what it does, and the results. GMO stands for Genetically Modified Organism. It also goes under the name of Genetically Engineered Organism and Biotechnology. If you hear anyone talking about any of these things, it's basically all the same thing. What is it? It is an unnatural and invasive process that combines different species of DNA. And when I say this, I don't want it to be confused with the nat natural evolutionary process of, for example, a yellow tomato cross-pollinating with a red tomato to create an orange tomato. That's fine, that's evolution. What I'm talking about is taking tomato G DNA or green chili DNA and mixing it with fish DNA. And I'm not a scientist, but that doesn't sound natural. I have a hard enough time dating someone that's shorter than me, much less a fish, and I'm pretty sure I'd get arrested for that. Why aren't they? <laughs> okay, so who's behind this technology? We need to be aware, and you should know the names that you're looking out for. The biggest corporation in the name that you're probably all pretty familiar with is Monsanto. Monsanto, along with about five other pharmaceutical chemical corporations and biotech corporations, Dow, DuPont, Syngenta, BASF, and Bayer, are behind all of this technology. Having millions, if not billions, of dollars, they, of course, have the ability to fund, research, advertise, and have a wonderful legal staff working for them. So they also, of course, have a really great platform to sell their product. The platform is based off of three levels. The first is that the seeds are Roundup ready, meaning that the farmers can spray all their crops with Roundup, which is a really strong chemical herbicide pesticide. It will kill, kill the weeds and the pests without killing the crops. The second part is that it will feed the world. I'm still waiting for that to happen. And the last and third part of their platform is that will help farmers to compete in a continuing, growing global economy. Okay, why is this false? Let's talk about patenting life again. Basically, these GMO seeds are a patent technology, but it's patenting life. 
Before this happened, this was considered unconstitutional. Why? Because you can't control life and we're seeing that now. These weeds and these pests that are being sprayed with Roundup technology have now evolved as life does to create not only the little bugs that eat and kill your plants and the little weeds, but now what's known as super weeds and pests. So now we have crazy looking bugs and weeds that look like something out of a weird bee horror flick. All right. Resources to feed the world. If they were actually trying to do this, I might be a little bit swayed. But the fact of the matter is that even if they were, we could do this anyways. We have all the resources in the world to make it so half of our population doesn't live on less than $2 a day. The issue is that it's not evenly distrib distributed. Lastly, let's talk about farmers' ability to compete in the market. When farmers go into contract with these corporations, these seeds basically get rid of their autonomy as farmers. How? These seeds also have what's known as terminator technology. Terminator technology makes it so these seeds cannot reproduce after one harvest. This is what farmers do. They collect their seed every harvest so that they can grow it again the next year. They can't do this anymore. They can't save their seeds. Also, there's something called guilt by contamination. And this is how the corporations get at the, at the farmers that don't plant GMO seeds. Basically how this works is you have a farm that plants GMO seeds and any farm within about a three mile radius, more or less depending on the area, can be susceptible to guilt by contamination. Meaning that by means that aren't able to be controlled by the farmers or by the corporation, and I'm talking about birds, small animals, and wind, these seeds get passed around and they'll start growing in organic farmers' fields. These corporations will come in and ask, we just want to make sure you're not infringing on our patented technology. Can we check to make sure you don't have any GMO seeds growing in your field? Of course they say yes, because to their knowledge, they don't have GMO seeds growing in their field. They find these seeds and then sue them for all they're worth for guilt by contamination. Also, as far as demand goes, some of you may not know that despite being home to the chili capital in the world, only about 10% of the chili that we consume actually comes from New Mexico. The rest is imported from Mexico and China. So we need to be responsible as well for supporting our local farmers. Okay, here's some other statistics on a more general level. The New York Times did a poll asking Americans what they thought about GMOs. The results were that about 80% of Americans thought of GMOs as bad. Another statistic you might not realize is that also about 80% of the foods that you buy at any regular grocery store already contains GMO products. The Institute for Responsible Technology has produced many studies connecting GMO food with health issues including deadly allergic reactions, immune system failures, liver damage, fertility issues, the list goes on and on but I only have 15 minutes. Another thing that I personally think is one of the biggest red flags is that these corporations don't label their product. If you buy a computer with an Intel chip, it says it right there on the computer. If you buy a washing machine powered by GE, it says it right there on the washing machine. A requirement of being able to patent any kind of technology is that it will increase the overall well-being of the majority of people. If you do this, that's great, that's amazing. You want people to know that you've done this. You will not find any products in the US labeled as GMO. Why? Okay, something else. U.S. meat and dairy is currently banned in Europe. The ambassador of Japan has stated that they are watching to see what happens to American children over the next few generations to decide if they want to introduce GMOs into their own economy. How come these other countries are putting these, their people before profit while we're putting profit before people? There are virtually no tests done by these corporations themselves to see what the effects of GMOs are on life. We are the test. We are the guinea pigs, and that is not okay. Monsanto has an annual budget of $10 million and a staff of 75 devoted solely to investigating and prosecuting farmers. 
That's only how many are prosecuted. It also said that about 500 farmers a year are investigated for patent infringement. Monsanto does this to a lot of crops, but it specifically seeks out cultural crops. The four main ones right now that have an overwhelming number of GMOs in them are corn, cotton, canola, and soy. Don't let them have our green chili as well. We already see a huge gap in the cost of GMO fo foods as opposed to local and organic foods due to mass production. The thing is, we've taken a that's just the way it is approach. That's not just the way it is. Americans shouldn't have to decide between saving money and putting healthy and responsible food on the table. It is a right, not a privilege, to be able to have healthy, responsible, local, and organic food. So what can we do? Support local chili. Just ask, where's this chili from? If it's not local, don't buy it. Don't patronize it. Be aware, New Mexico Chili Association already has several food company supporters in New Mexico that will be using this technology, which is estimated to come out in about a year or two. Here's a few. Bueno Foods, Seco Spice, Gila's Farms, and Resolex. Lastly, come march with us. We're organizing a march December 3rd at noon, the Downtown Rail Runner Station on Central and First. We're organizing this march to protect our pride and to not let corporations buy it. Thank you so much. I'm out of time. If you have any questions, I'll be over here on this side. Thank you.